think what 2020 has showed us is that there is no such thing as job security. And the best way to advance in terms of finance and grow this way is to become as in control as possible in the financial sphere of your life. Understanding finances, learning how to make money. And so today in this video, I'm gonna be sharing ways of how you can monetize your hobby for profit, no matter how strange the hobby might be. Здравствуйте! My name is Sorella Moore and welcome to Abundantia, a place for all things finance and freedom. If you're brand new here, make sure you subscribe. We release videos every Tuesday and Thursday and also we have an amazing newsletter that you can check out, link in bio with extra tips on finance, freedom, global structures and so forth. But the awesome news is that we just released at the time of recording the Order and the Codex. This is a course membership combo. It's just gone on pre-sale for a huge discount for just a very limited time. So make sure you check it out, link in the bio. For your entertainment and easy easy digestibility. This video is broken down into three sections. Number one, how I did it. Proof. Number two, if you have no idea what hobby you could monetize, this is going to be the section for you. Number three, it is basically a guideline of how you can do this for yourself. A little summary, a little recap. I'm not sure if you've ever come across this idea, maybe from an online guru somewhere, but they always say anything can be monetized. And for so long I heard that and I was like, ah, mm, ah, they sound so convincing. Is that real? Are you sure about that? But I didn't have any proof, so definitely I was skeptical. But something happened in my life that became an accidental experiment in exactly this area of life, which was figuring out how to monetize a very strange hobby. <laughs> If I can monetize what I have monetized and made really, really good progress with this financially, with this hobby, anything is possible. Honestly, <laughs> I'm going to give you a hint. It's selfies. Now, if you know me from my other channel, this is not surprising to you. But if you're brand new to this channel and you don't know who I am, I now own five houses and I can say that it's because of selfies. <laughs> Keep watching to find out. But in order for me to share what on earth, how, I have to do a backstory. 25. We all go through a quarter life crisis around here. I went to a meditation retreat for seven days, silent meditation retreat. And during this experience, I just had one thought pop into my head. Go and become a photography intern at your friend's studio. Now, I previously had been a marketing manager making around $75,000, $80,000 a year as a salary, really comfortable, awesome. So then to go and become an intern meant that I would have to become a bartender again, make zero dollars from my internship. And so that's what I did. <laughs> The hunch was so strong to just do this. I don't know why, but I listened. It was so strong. So I went and worked with my friend, Sasha. She wanted to pay me. I said, no, I was too embarrassed that I didn't know anything about photography. P.S. If I stayed at my job, the other company, the one that I was, you know, cushy, cushy, very comfortable, the company went bust shortly after I left. So that would have been fun. I don't know where I would have been if I didn't listen to that hunch to move on and do something different. During this time as an intern, I learned the basics of photography, studio photography. And I learned the basics of Photoshop and the basics of posing. That was my bottom line. That's all I knew. Next minute, I was on my way to Europe because I got the hunch again. My heart was just like, Poof, Europe, go. Follow the hunch, went to Europe, ticket one way. I meet my partner, Leon. He's obsessed with Iceland. I stay in Iceland. Around this time, I also hear of the concept of getting paid to travel by posting photographs on this thing called Instagram. And I was like, that sounds amazing. I'm gonna do that. So I asked Leon a few times. I was like, hey, I need someone to take photos of me. Can you please take photos of me? And he did not want to be boyfriends of Instagram. Oh, heck no. <laughs> so he refused. Or if I gave him the camera, he would do such a poor job with the crappiest attitude that I was like, I'm not asking you. But I knew in my heart of hearts that I had to follow through on this. I knew somehow that with my basic knowledge of photography, posing, Photoshop, whatever, I could probably pull something off and post some pretty pictures on my profile and maybe get paid to travel the world. What? Then I started posting these self portraits of me in places. Hey, I'm here in Cyprus. Hey, I'm here in France. Hey, I'm doing this, whatever. And people were asking who was a photographer. And I said, me, <laughs> and they didn't believe me. That was weird. I didn't know why they didn't believe me. Uh, would I be lying about something like this? But I was like, no, I, 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 I took them. <laughs> so I started making YouTube videos about me taking these things called self portraits. Even though self portraits have obviously been around for so long. During the time, it wasn't very popular. I think there was this, this weird connotation around self portraits actually. I think people cringed a little bit at the idea, but I didn't have anything else that I could possibly do. So I continued and I don't really care what people think about certain things. So I was like, if I get to travel the world, and get paid for it, for taking photos of myself, yes, I'm going to do that. As I'm making more of these tutorials online for free, obviously you don't get paid on YouTube for a while when you start, people were loving it so 
much. It blew my mind. And around this time, I was like, ha, this is hilarious that people love it so much. Let me call it an advanced selfie. And so the advanced selfie concept was born. And I just kept on providing free information, growing a community around this concept. And it wouldn't stop. I thought at some point people were going to understand, you know, this is how you do it. It's not the most complex thing in the world. To me, it wasn't. But there was more and more questions that came in. And I was like, wait a minute. I've just given out all this free information and people still have questions on how on earth to do this. The tipping point for me was when I realized there was something in this was when someone came to me and asked me, how do I pose my hands in photos? Now, I wasn't about to go and post a video about how to pose your hands on my YouTube channel, but I know it's a common question because when I was working as an intern in the photography space, people didn't know what to do with their hands. So it wasn't a crazy idea. People genuinely wanted to know, but I wasn't going to make that video. So I thought if people don't know that and they can't figure it out, I am just going to make a course for them because I think I can make value. I can bring all the bits and pieces of everything I've ever learned and put it in the, into this course. See if people like it. I asked around, I asked some of my audience that I had and I was like, would you guys be interested? And the response was overwhelming. So I think I just had landed on an idea, on a product that I could create because I was constantly and attentively looking at what could potentially be monetized. Where was a demand and what could I produce that would fulfill that demand? I would be the supplier of the thing that people need. I certainly did not set out at the very beginning thinking I'm going to be a self-portrait photographer. I actually didn't even know that I was very good at it initially. I came from a marketing background. Yay, I get to pass on the knowledge to you now of what I did. Essentially, I took a concept that was, but no one ever thought to revitalize it. And then I just revitalized it, put a spin on it, which was the Sorella Moore twist. I brought my personality to a concept that people needed and they wanted this. And so about three and a half years now since I began the advanced selfie journey, thank you for five houses. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so intense. There was other things that went into it. It has been the crux of what has helped me to build myself up online. It has been a great pool of what was really important at the time. People wanted to look really good online and I was able to fulfill that need. That's insane. I found a tiny niche that I didn't even know I had. I just enjoyed it. Number one, I enjoyed it. It was my hobby first and foremost, and it was a weird hobby. How do you monetize something like this? But I knew from previous experience, trying to start a business when I was about 22, I tried physical products and it flopped massively. And when I was a marketing manager, I was actually helping to sell online education. So I already knew this concept existed. So I always knew I wanted to do information. I love being able to teach things with a fresh perspective. Everything fell into place. <laughs> and so I proved, bloody well proved that any hobby can be monetized. If I was able to, with ev almost every single person in the world having a phone, that they can just take a selfie of themselves, no training required. If I can sell them a selfie, <laughs> what? <laughs> My friend actually, he's got it even better. He does breath work for a living. He teaches people how to do breath work. And he said, Sorel, I cracked it. I sell air for a living. Any hobby can be monetized. But what about if you have absolutely no idea what hobby you could monetize? Got some questions for you to get you thinking. Number one, do you have a skill, hobby or passion that you think it's possible to monetize? Number two, have you ever earned any money at all from a skill or passion you have? It could be you working for someone or you making money for yourself. Number three, if you turned your existing skill, hobby or passion into a business, what would that look like? Number four, are there people on the planet right now already making money from your existing passion, hobby or skill set that you have? Now, this is an important question because it proves that there is a potential to make money in this field. Now, you want to find a really good balance. You don't really want to go into a niche that is super saturated unless you have a really, really unique twist on it. However, if there's no one at all that is making money from what you are interested in, maybe it's not desired or you've just landed on the golden egg and no one else in the history of the internet has ever worked out that this is something that people want. Chances of that are probably, pl are probably pretty slim, but maybe, maybe. All right, come on in. If you were able to answer any of those questions at all with like a hint of a yes or a maybe, that could be the cue that you're onto something and that this could work for you as well. Take it and run with it. Explore the possibilities. You're welcome. All right, final section. To summarize how you could do this for yourself once you figure out your hobby, let's go through a little checklist and help you on your merry way. Okay, so recapping from the very top, now that you have a hint of an idea what it could be for you that you could monetize. If you haven't, pause this video, do that exercise, come back to me later. Come back, 
come back. I promise it'll be worth it. The main thing you have to remember whenever you answer those questions about, yes, I could monetize it. It's not coming from the place of, I can't wait to make as much money as possible. This is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be so rich. The number one thing when it comes to business is value. You are not in business if you are not providing value. If you cannot provide immense value to someone in a myriad of ways, it could be customer service, it could be through adding extra information, it could be adding a new twist on how to teach people something. It could be more beautiful, more engaging, more relevant, so many different things that are adding value to someone. If in some way your product is able to make someone's life easier, make it faster, make it more enjoyable, people are willing to part with their money. So always come from the standpoint of what value are you providing for these people? When it came to the advanced selfie, you might not think that there was much value, but honey, in a world full of perfectly polished Instagram models, can you imagine how crippling it is to turn on your phone and try to take a photo and have no idea how to look good and your confidence just goes down and down and down because you think it's your fault except you just didn't know how to pose your face or pose your body can you imagine being a brand new business person you maybe and you need to look good online you need to have great professional photos of you but guess what you don't have cash right now to do that but what you do have is a phone <laughs> and then you could take great photos of yourself get great headshots make yourself look more professional get the clients in how important is the advanced selfie concept massive value provided for people step two get better at your skill as I mentioned, I didn't even think that this was a thing when I figured out that the advanced selfie was a product. I genuinely wasn't very good. They're pretty average when I started, but I enjoyed it so much. And that's the beautiful thing about a hobby. You want to get better at it anyway. So you might as well just continue the process of getting better at it whilst teaching people along the way. Like, hey, this is what I did. Hey, this is what I figured out. This is so much fun. Look what I can do. Look how I'm utilizing this. Look how much benefit this hobby has for my life. Maybe it can do the same for you as well. Give out free information. A lot of people are so afraid to give out any information because they think well if I give away free information then no one will buy it from me I have so many videos on the advanced selfie on my channels on my other channel <laughs> so many and I honestly thought there's no possible way that people would want to buy it but I provided all the value extra value that wasn't available on my channel much more immersive a beautiful community was available there for a while as well when, when the advanced selfie was my main focus I provided a lot of value I was there interacting with people I grew the value of what I could provide plus the product wasn't that expensive to be honest I priced it at a point for me with where, where it felt comfortable I know people can get this information elsewhere if they really look but they don't have Sorel. They don't have the su support of Sorel. They don't have the community. They don't have all of the information packaged so beautifully in one spot. And I have their back and I really support them on this journey. The support is so important, but I didn't price it overboard because after all, it is still a selfie. <laughs> Get better at marketing and sales. The amount of people that have an amazing skill in the world that are so petrified of selling or marketing themselves, it actually annoys me. I'm going to say it. It annoys me because the amount of friends that I have that I'm like, wow, you are so talented in so many ways. And I don't know why. For some reason, I'm just like pfft, full steam ahead. I just don't shy away. I am nervous behind the scenes. Like, you know, what are people gonna think of me? You know, I, I'm not the best in the world, but can I do this information? But I override it. I'm like, there's no time to think. Do it and then see what happens <laughs> because what's the worst that's gonna happen? You don't sell anything. You learn some skills, all right. Revamp, figure out a different solution, figure out a different strategy, a different leeway, learn some extra skills, try again. When you're learning to walk, you don't just fall over and be like, oh, damn it. <laughs> I tried it once. Mm. No, babies are like up, 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 fall down, up, up. They just keep going no matter how many times they fall. You got to give yourself permission, obviously, to fail. But if you are not marketing yourself or your product and you're not selling, this is a fun little hobby. And I have been there. My first business uh, was Pin Up Passion. It was an online beauty, glamorous 1950s online website. I <laughs> called it a business for so long, but I was so afraid to sell that I hardly made any money. Actually, I lost a lot because this is where I trialed to do the physical product and I failed miserably. This was a huge lesson. It's fun to have a hobby for a while and you know testing the ground but at some point you gotta take that leap and it is embarrassing. The amount of times that people are gonna be like what is Sorel doing? She's being really awkward or really what's actually happening is it's in your mind <laughs> not in your cheek in your mind. You think that people are thinking about you like oh my god I can't believe she's doing it. Really what they're thinking is god damn I wish I was that brave. I wish I could do what she's doing. It is painful to watch someone brand new 
but they're doing it. And I know that if I started, I'd be in that position as well, but I'm too afraid, but she's doing it. Oh, that's awesome. Damn, I wish. And sometimes you get the criticism of like, oh, nah, nah, you shouldn't be doing that because it's jealousy. You feel when it's the right people coming to you and saying like, I think you should maybe approach this from a different situation. But then there's a lot of people that hurt you because they want to intentionally hurt you to pull you down because they are so jealous of you. So you got to make sure that you distinguish these voices and keep going if your dream is to be independent financially. There ain't no time to be shy. These people, they're not your friends anyway. And if they are, you need new friends. Infuse your personality. No one wants to watch a stale cardboard trying to sell them on something. You want to be someone's friend. You want to feel like they are your friend. And we are now seeing the rise of the self-education industry. We are not looking to learn from someone that has studied something from a textbook. We want to learn from someone that has done the hard yards and we can see the proof in the pudding that they have gone from A to B. This is who we want to learn from. You're not coming to me because I have learned information about finances from a textbook. No, I have done it. I have been there, I have failed so many times, I have done it. Now, I can pretend that I have all the answers on all the different ways of making money in the world. I don't. I know what's worked for me and it's fulfilled so many of my needs to be in this industry. I love being in front of the camera. <laughs> I love photography. I love interacting with big communities. Social media is so fascinating for, to me. From the very beginning, I was always fascinated with this world. I love marketing. I love sales. I love teaching, making things relatable. So this world that I am in is perfect for me. And if this is interesting, this world that I live in is interesting for you, you're going to come and learn from me. But but also know there are different ways. I can't tell you that information because I've never done it. <laughs> I only specialize in this lane and this is what I want to specialize in because it's my jam. But don't fret if this is not your thing. If you don't want to be in front of the camera, there are different ways. Research it. Say you love tinkering and you love making jewelry. Find people that are selling stuff, jewelry online. How can you make it unique? How can you make it stand out in some way. The principles of marketing always stand the same way. Give immense value, make an exceptional product. Don't just saturate the market with something that's subpar because that is not a recipe for success. Nurture your community, build up a community. People want to feel like they belong. This is just a core of human nature. Essentially, all that marketing is, is just taking someone in and saying, you're part of this tribe. I've got you. And you have to do that through mastering sales and marketing because you cannot keep giving away your gift and your beautiful time in exchange for nothing. It has to be an equal and energetic exchange. If you just keep giving free, free, free without ever selling your product, one, it doesn't land in people's hands. And if it's gonna change someone's life, you need them to have it. Number two, at some point, if you just keep giving away free information, you're gonna burn out, which was what happened to me in my first business. Just start. You have got this. I'm rooting for you all the best. I can guarantee you, you're gonna work it out, but you will never work it out if you try to overanalyze everything and figure it out in your head. The only way you're gonna succeed is by doing, learning from your mistakes. Mistakes means you're progressing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe if you're brand new to this channel. We would love to have you here. And a simple like is an amazing benefit for us if you did get some value from this information. And just a reminder, we have just gone on pre-sale for a huge discount for our membership on finance and freedom. Check out the link in the bio for all the information there. That's it for now and I'll see you in the next one.